Well, hi there. Welcome. Um, so today uh, we're going to talk about something that is really near and dear to my heart, and not just because I am a woman, but equal pay for equal work or same work for same pay. And tomorrow actually marks seven years since the Lilly Ledbetter Act was signed into law. And unfortunately, we still have this issue with equal pay in the state of Iowa and nationally. So um, I've been working with the Iowa House, and I know the Senate is about to talk about what they're about to do with equal pay. And, um, you know, this is still an issue because of the fact that um, we live in an economy that, are, that still has policies that treat us like we're in the 1950s yet, where, you know, in the 1950s, you typically had a one-income household where it was typically the man that was the breadwinner who would go out, make his living, come home, and you'd have, um, you'd have enough money to live comfortably in a middle-class lifestyle. Well, today that's not the case. And part of that reason is because since the 1980s, our wages have really remained stagnant. And now you really do need two people in the household with, that are coming home, being the breadwinners, and even then they're still struggling. So, um, for example, in Iowa, um, when you have a woman who's in the workplace, which actually three out of four women are actually the um, equal or sole breadwinner in a family in Iowa. And when you're making 77 cents on a dollar to a man's dollar um, in the state of Iowa versus nationally, it's actually 79 cents. So we are actually below the national average in Iowa. A woman in Iowa loses out on average about $11,000 a year. And that is significant when you're talking about working families and a middle class income. So we need to make sure that we have policies that are starting to update these 1950s workplace policies and what we have on the books right now to make sure that our families do have a chance to make it, and not just make it, but to have a life. Because you know you can go out and make a living, but if you're not, if you don't have enough to actually end up having a life, what's the point? And uh, I hope we end up getting bipartisan support because, quite frankly, I'm really, really tired of Republicans talking about family values, yet not supporting policies that actually value families. So the policies we're about to propose, and I know the Senate's about to propose, are going to tackle those and uh, hopefully update our policies and make sure that um, working families actually have a shot again. Thank you. I'm Senator Tony Bizignano, the Chair of, of Labor and Business. And um, to echo uh, what Representative Finkenauer has talked about uh, in the spirit of the Lilly Ledbetter Act, uh, which was passed seven years ago tomorrow, uh, the Senate uh, will have a Senate Study Bill 3071, which will address uh, the issues with wage disparity. And uh, one of the things that we're going to address is the prohibition of employees being able to discuss their wages without being disciplined or discharged. Also, we're going to establish a task force uh, to study the extent of discrimination, even though Iowa has uh, uh, a, a law on wage disparity, uh, on uh, unequal pay. Uh, we believe it's still uh, a very serious problem in the state of Iowa. This will gather us the information that we need uh, so that we can address it further and that we can uh, <clears throat> enforce what we find to be the pay inequity uh, in many, many workplaces. So uh, this will be a bill. Uh, we will be moving out of the Labor Committee uh, next week. And uh, I'm looking forward to having that discussion on the floor. And as Representative Finkenauer has said, uh, we have not had an opportunity to have many debates when it comes to working people in the Iowa House. And uh, we have many bills sitting there uh, on minimum wage, wage theft, um, so forth, that uh, if you are uh, uh, values, Iowa values, I don't believe wage theft is something that you would support. And the fact that minimum wage, uh, it's been, we are now the longest state to address that. And so uh, we will be encouraging the House to start to address uh, real issues about real families that are struggling out there. And, and the largest group are women. And the wage disparity with women uh, dramatically changes uh, from uh, 77 cents uh, for every dollar 
uh, in Iowa uh, that a man makes. Uh, women make that less. African Americans, it's 61 cents. And for Latino women, it's 57 cents for every dollar. So it is a serious problem. It's an economic issue. It's a family issue. And we intend to address it this year. So, so questions for Abby or Tony? Just to make sure I understand, we're, uh, we're introducing this Senate study bill. And there's a, going to be a similar measure in the House, or it's just going to be your representing support on the House side? I'm just trying to make sure I understand yeah. that. So actually, the bill that we are about to drop um, next week or within the next couple of weeks actually has to do with state contracts. So same work for same pay um, for state contracts. We're making sure that anybody who ends up working for the state of Iowa, um, who's ending up you know, getting taxpayer dollars, um, are following measures that ensure that women get equal pay for equal work. So. It's not out yet. We're about to drop it in the next yeah, couple of weeks. So it's in drafting right now. And yeah, so we're really excited about that. Um, unfortunately, like uh, Senator Bisignano says, um, we don't get a chance to really talk about that, that all that much on the House floor, given the fact that our Labor Committee refuses really to get these bills, even in subcommittee, to talk about them. So um, we're going to do our best, and um, I'll be working with the Republicans, hoping that, like I said, these, it's, it's a family values issue. And um, they like to talk about family values, but this is a bill that actually values families and um, has to do with our taxpayer dollars being spent in the right way. So um, I'm hopeful, and we'll see what happens. Senator, you said the, the state has pay equity laws. But what is the current law, and why isn't it addressing the, this disparity? Well, the current law bans wage disparity. Uh, but, the, but the fact is, is we don't know where it is. Uh, it's trying to discover. Because of the restrictions on employees' rights to discuss wages, uh, they don't know that they're being discriminated against based on their sex. And so this task force, one, will, will help identify uh, what the disparities are and where out there, and also the fact that employees can discuss without retaliation that, uh, that they're making less based on, on just their, their sex uh, that then will give the employee opportunity to pursue within the law, you know, just, uh, justice. So it just gives employees more strength to address what, what currently is illegal. Any other questions yeah, for these guys? Questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, uh, let me say the Iowa Senate next week will work on um, K through 12 education funding. Uh, as you know, um, the, the House uh, cut in half the amount that the Senate had allocated uh, to, to K through 12 schools. Um, so we're going to work hard to get that done. We had our first conference committee meeting, the organizational meeting this morning at, uh, at 9.50. Um, so that's on the agenda for us. We are committed um, to doing our absolute level best to get this uh, decided in time. The, the 17 funding is already 350 some days late. Uh, it was supposed to be established last year within 30 days of the governor's address. So we're already 350 days late on that. And we intend to be moving um, a fiscal 18 allowable growth bill um, through the committee process uh, starting next week. So, um, so we're going to work through that. As you also know, um, we, have, we have sent a letter to President Obama relative to managed uh, uh, managed um, Medicaid or Medicaid privatization. Um, that, uh, that effort is continuing. Uh, the, I think there's some people on a conference call today um, talking with CMS about that issue as well. I think it's really clear uh, this state is not ready. The department is not ready. Uh, there are just um, all kinds of problems out there in terms of executing this. We think it's time to stop. Uh, start over on this process um, and, and look at some other alternatives. So, um, so those are the two issues that we'll continue to be working on um, next week. Uh, with that? With, we'll uh, check for, with uh, questions from all of you. Um, last year, the disagreement over basic standards for schools dragged on and on. Um, why are you optimistic? You know, we worked hard last year to come to a bipartisan compromise um, inside of the legislature, and that um, the extra time we spent yielded a 
uh, legitimate bipartisan compromise between the House and the Senate. Um, that, uh, that in the end was vetoed by the governor. Spending an extra um, two and a half or three months to get to something that would not be likely to get signed, we don't think makes a lot of sense. So it really behooves the House and Senate to work together, see if we can come to an agreed to number uh, and, and pass that. Uh, we, think, we think the House and the governor have shortchanged K through 12 education. We think if you look at the last 40 years of the school aid formula, uh, you will realize that the last five years have been the worst in the history of the state for K through 12 education. Um, and so we're very concerned about that. We're gonna keep fighting to get what we can, but, um, but like I said, spending an extra two and a half or three months uh, for something that ends up getting vetoed doesn't really make sense. And so we're going to strongly encourage our folks um, to find a way to reach agreement. You referred to 4% for fiscal year 18. I think I saw a bill floating around, but I'm not quite sure if that's the... Um, I don't know if there's a bill floating around yet on that subject. I know we've had discussions on that, and I'm, I'm not prepared to release it at this time, but if somebody else has... Uh, on and they put in 18. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to follow up on that question. That uh, now I'm not quite sure. I remember your words, Joyce, on this, but I'm not sure that I would characterize this as uh, hoping for speedy resolution of this. Going back to what Senator Gronstall said, uh, we because of the House Republicans not following the law, we are 350 days late in our statutory responsibility. I do hope that there is resolve of this fairly quickly now, but it has been going on too long. Uh, the Senate has consistently followed the law. The House Republicans have not. So you're not optimistic for I, I hope so now. I just don't like the characterization that we might resolve this quickly. Uh, because it's carried on it isn't for as long. It's 350 days. That's ahead. right. That's yeah. what my point is. Yeah. Is there a possibility that the tax coupling and school funding issues will get joined together? If you approve the coupling bills the House just passed, it would it would cost about 96 million in the current fiscal year, but it would give you an extra 55 or 60 million in FY17. Look, let's be honest. That, let's be honest. That's a fiction, and the House knows it. The House knows that. The House fully intends to couple again next year, pretending they're not going to, and that therefore we'll have more money. No, the House fully intends to couple this year and next year, um, and so there is no net gain in, fi in fiscal in the next fiscal year. Because of federal deductibility, the 96 million that they get cut this year becomes a liability next year. And I, that's where the uh, listen, I understand what you're saying, but then next year they are going to give away another $96 million. So, there's, so, that, so there is no net to the general fund, okay? That's the fiction they've created by saying we will one time couple only for one year, not permanently, um, so, uh, so, so we'll, we'll deal with the House bill when the House bill gets here. Um, it seems pretty clear to me that it's not in the governor's budget. Uh, the governor has indicated um, uh, that he's not interested in coupling on that point. Uh, but, you know, we take a good look at every bill that comes over from the House, and, uh, and we'll see what they send us. But you're not going to couple coupling with K-12? I, I didn't say what we're going to do. I just said the governor has indicated that he's against this. Um, and, and I think you know what happened last year on the signs the governor said he was against. So at this point, will the, uh, the Senate support this coupling bill, or are you going to make some changes to it? Is there more specific information about what where you go? We will take a look at whatever it is the House passes. It doesn't sound like you're very uh, in support of it. Though. Well, I, I don't like doing things that I know get a certain veto. It doesn't seem to me to, to make a lot of sense. The governor doesn't have this in his budget, um, and, and frankly, the House Republicans have been a bit disingenuous by saying we're only coupling for one year. That's okay. it. They, uh, they fully intend to couple the next year as well, and that means another $100 million out of the state treasury, round numbers. As I understand it, you've been 
doing this for several years at this point. Yes, we have, and we have also uh, a number of times over the last 30 years, not coupled with the federal government on certain items. Is the, the issue here is just how tight of a budget it is? I mean, part of the argument is this is supposed to be really good for businesses, for teachers, you know, seeking some tax deductions. What about that kind of argument that this is supposed to be very good for Iowa? Um, like I said, we'll look at the House bill when it comes over here. I, you know, we can, we can hear what we hear from the State Department. What's more important is what we hear from patients and from providers. And what we're hearing from patients is they can't get answers as to whether or not their doctor or their service provider has signed on with any of the managed care companies. Uh, so we continue to think this thing is a real mess. So here you are, a family with, with an intellectually disabled kid and you're trying to figure out, are the services that they're currently get, getting going to be covered by a provider and which provider of the three? And the, uh, I don't think they're yet to 50% on all of the providers in the state of Iowa uh, signed up with each, of the, with each of the three companies. So we think this thing is an incredible mess at the moment. Um, and not ready to go. It was clear to CMS that it wasn't ready to go uh, on January 1st, and they pulled the plug on that. And we do not think, I mean, I'm, uh, I, get, I guess in my mind, I'm not going to set an artificial benchmark, but if you don't have the vast majority of providers signed on with most of the three providers, this thing isn't ready to go. It's not ready for prime time. Your original question was, was there anything that the Medicaid director said um, in that presentation that eased our concerns? And my answer to that is no. Can you talk a little bit more about the budget targets that were released um, this week uh, in terms of where there might be some specific cuts or specific maneuvers that aim to increase education spending or for state aid to schools? Do you expect to release more information soon? Um, we expect our committees to work through their targets that we have given them. We put more dollars into, um, into human services and more dollars into education than we're in the budget and less dollars in the other areas. So um, we expect our budget subcommittees to work through those. I encourage you to talk with them about what their priorities are in the budget. But we're looking for those kinds of investments that will grow Iowa's economy. Uh, that will um, grow middle class um, Iowans' incomes, and, and that's kind of the focus of our budget. Make sure we have a skilled workforce. Uh, so investments in education, we think, are an important part of growing Iowa's economy, and that's probably our biggest priority um, after making sure people have access to health care coverage. Is there well, certainly there are differences of opinion. Yes, there are. Um, and I understand that. Uh, hey, and just on kind of that note, from a separate bill that was uh, discussed, I guess not in committee, but just a uh, press conference on the death of dignity um, legislation. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if there's a lot of support in the Senate. I, well, I cer certainly that issue has been around in our society for for, for many, many years, and, and certainly several states have a, have a death with dignity kind of law, um, and it's something that's been introduced here in Iowa, uh, and we're going to let people talk about it, and we're going to hear what people have to say on the subject. Getting back to fireworks for a minute, uh, if there's a difference of opinion as, as, as the floor leader, do you call that bill up this session, or because there's a difference of opinion it depends on how big the difference of opinion is. When it's all said and done, um, if, from my perspective, there are issues that clearly have um, th things like worker rights, Democrats feel very strongly about. Um, things like access to health care, Democrats feel very strongly on. Then there are other issues out here that, that, are, that are bipartisan support and bipartisan opposition. And so you take those things, you measure them. I try not to make every issue 
a simple partisan issue where Democrats are no and Republicans are yes, or vice versa. I try not to do that. We deal with a host of issues on the floor. Many of those end up being bipartisan with, with a fair number of people voting no and a fair number and, and more voting yes. Kind of the measure for me is I try not to pursue bills that I know are dead. That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It's, sometimes it's a fun exercise, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Feature the ban on uh, teams using commercial tanning beds, uh, you see in the House. What, have you sounded out your Congress or your personal views? I, I thought the Senate passed this. Um, I think the Senate. I think the Senate has passed this on several occasions, and 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 we've actually worked with the, with uh, the. I don't know what to call it, the tanning industry or whatever, we've worked with those people in a cooperative way um, to make sure that, that uh, kids under the age of 18 don't, are not allowed to use tanning beds. So, anything else? Thanks. Thanks very much.